an event that we look forward to. When we first started it here, we were able to get this done with one group photo, and so now it's been really neat to see it grow and develop. And we really appreciate the families that come out who ordinarily might not be able to make it out, or this is their only opportunity to see the Hoosiers, and I think our guys take a lot of pride in that. And we talk about that, that this may be the only time they get to see you live. So go out there and play well, play hard, and as you can see, there were some really good things, and there are some things that we've got to continue to build and develop before we get to Tuesday. I guess, what are some of the things that OG is going to have to do this year to kind of break through and um, earn minutes? Is it, you know, is it rebounding? Is it general activity? Or you know, what, I guess, what are some of the things he's got to do to kind of earn some time to that, or this season? I would say uh, understand what his strengths are and understand the things that he's got to get better at. He's a guy that will eventually develop and play out on the perimeter. And he can do that at times now, but then he can also really post up and be strong inside. And he's big and physical, so he may have to guard those kind of matchups. Um, and what Coach always does a really good job of, and it's why some of our guys have expanded their games, is we run a pro-style offense, and he always plays to your strengths. And in practice, we always attack your weaknesses. So I think that and the speed of the game, uh, as all freshmen have to get used to, is the speed. What's the, I guess, we asked him this a little bit of Hoosier hysteria, but a guy that can do a lot of different things, what are the challenges in developing all of those things, particularly when he is a freshman, when maybe they're, without getting him overwhelmed, I guess, developing a, a, a game that can be that well-rounded without maybe making him feel like he's drowning a little bit? Well, I think you have to get in these situations in front of a crowd where it's a little bit different. In practice, you can stop it, you can go over things, but in the game, you can't. Or in these situations, you don't. So you try to get through things in timeouts. You see how guys listen, how they understand. Uh, maybe you have to tell them again when the huddle breaks, because they all have different ways to learn. But I also think that practice is a time for developing your game, but the games are the time for experimenting. And uh, they have to have a pretty good handle on that before we take the court. And I think they usually do through film sessions and film study of practice and things like that. Coach Green talked a few weeks ago about James being kind of set back with the injury to shooting-wise. How, how close is he to his shot being where he wanted to be again? I think he's getting there. I think he shot it pretty well today, if I'm not mistaken. Um, I think when the fatigue set in, that was when he missed. Um, but he's fighting through that. And I think that he's done a terrific job of bouncing back, uh, both mentally and physically, from his injury. and. Uh, He's also playing more at the point where he's initiating offense, and he's getting used to guys getting into him and being physical with him. So continuing to learn how to change his speeds to get guys off of him and then explode and going by them when he can. But he's always had a really nice stroke that hasn't changed much. But I would say probably like getting more comfortable with the rhythm of the game and the rhythm of his shot and in the speed of the game in these scrimmage situations. Is there a rhyme or reason to your teams today? Did you have a draft among the coaches? or? <laughs> no, I, I think we've probably been looking at different combinations and uh, looking at different guys. And so I don't think there was anything that was planned out in terms of what to expect. Uh, I think we tried to make them as competitive as they could be, which I think they were at times. Um, and I also saw... You know, guys play a little bit better and differently than maybe they had in practice, and some other guys who didn't play quite as well, but have played well in practice. Who are the, who are the guys who maybe played better than they have in practice? I think Max played pretty well. Uh, you know, Max has really expanded his game from the time that he's gotten here, and he's handled the ball more maybe than uh, he had before, and so I think now understanding when to shoot it, when to kick it, uh, how to set up other guys. I think he's a really good passer out of the post, and I think he's got really good poise in the post. I don't think he gets sped up, or I think he gets in trouble sometimes is when he leaves his feet and he doesn't know whether to shoot it or to pass it, and I thought he did a really good job of that today. Uh, I don't think that uh, Thomas has had too much trouble with crowds in the two crowds that he's played in front of so far. Uh, and I think he's a guy that really changes things for you offensively because he reminds me of Cody in that you can run offense through him and the ball doesn't just go in there and he's going to shoot it every time. He finds cutters and he makes good passes and 
he plays with a great energy and it really lifts up the energy of his team, especially on the offensive end. And on the defensive end, it seemed like guys were, were pressing a little bit more and, and pressuring the ball a little bit more. What did you like that you saw out of that and how much better can they still get? Well, I think there's a difference between pressuring and gambling or reaching. So we want to be able to use our athleticism and our length, but we don't want to get out of the position because we're trying to get the ball or steal the ball. I think we've got to continue to do a good job of keeping our chest in front, keeping those uh, ball handlers or drivers outside the elbows and not letting them get into the paint where they draw a crowd and then they make kicks to the shooters. But that's stuff that we've continued to build and develop and we're going to have some breakdowns. But what you like to see when we have the breakdowns are when the guys cover for each other. And uh, we're starting to do a much better job of that where sometimes you just have to scramble when you have that breakdown and our guys are understanding those rotations a lot better. And how much more important do guys who are really um, really vocal on defense become when, when you're ha having to scramble like that? It's really big because you don't want two guys to run at the ball. And we had a couple of those situations today. And what you want is you want that one guy to call out the ball and then the other four guys know how to balance and get the floor spaced properly defensively because you've got to do a good job of that as well. And the less you have to rotate, the better opportunity you have to block out and rebound. So those are the things that we'll sharpen up here over the next few few days and you know throughout the rest of the season. I don't know if it, traditional may not be the right word, but the, is there maybe a, a way that this team can go to bigger lineups this year in part to kind of alleviate, I mean, you've got four guys that are listed as guards on scholarship, and I know you expect a lot of players to do a lot of different things, but can this team go a little bit bigger than last year to, again, I, I don't want to use the word traditional, but to maybe just not have to lean on those guards as much as it did last year? Well, I think what you're finding is basketball is becoming more and more of a matchup game than it is a position game, where this guy's a power forward, this guy's a small forward, this guy's a point guard, and I think you pretty much are who you can guard. And uh, we haven't had Colin the past couple of times, so he gives us a different look where he could play probably more power forward or four than the five center position that he had to play last year. I think you could see Max and Thomas in at the same time along with Colin, depending on what those matchups are, which make us maybe bigger and longer. And I think we've got a lot of opportunities to be a pretty versatile team to either force people to match up with us or us having the ability to match up with other people. Speaking of Collins, any idea when he's likely back? Not at all. I mean, he's been able to do some things, and he's been doing a great job of staying engaged. And, you know, Coach has always been this way from the first year I was with him back in 1999. Whenever a guy's out, he has to be just as involved as everybody else. And I think sometimes when you coach other guys, you get better at it yourself because you're teaching people how to do something. And Colin does a really good job of that. He's been staying on top of his conditioning and his shooting and all the things that he's able to do. But when they tell us he's ready to go, then he'll be ready to go. I know he's chomping at the bit. Anything else for Coach Buck? Thank you. All right.